touch up that what what the matrix is of a bone and what makes it hard is the hydroxy appetite. I wrote that on the board, I probably spelled it wrong, but that's what we've gone from a completely solid thing. So that would feel like rocks in your hand. It's got a lot of calcium salts in it. There's also collagen in there, but you don't you don't see that. So the bone is gone all the way from platinum, which is a liquid, all the way to something that's solid. We do need to talk about that thing because that was on your lab practical. It, it asked what that was, and I couldn't believe they asked that. I guess it was one of, the, one of your pre-tests or, or, or one of your post-tests that talked about that. If this bone right here were living, somebody just draw a picture of me this way. If this were living, there would be a, a tissue on the outside that you would feel and would feel kind of slick. And if I looked at the microscope, you would see living cells in it that are part of the bone. So it's a living layer on the outside of all bones of your body, especially on long bones. And it's called a periosteum. And if I look in a microscope at that layer, the majority of the cells would be osteoblasts. I'm not writing the whole word because everything is osteoblasts. I better do that because we're going to know what we're talking about. So all the cells in that periosteum, the majority of the cells in the periosteum are osteoblasts. So that means around the whole entire edge, we have what going on? If all the cells are osteoblasts, what's going along the outside of the bone? Growth. It's trying to get thicker. So as you sit in your chair right now, your bone is trying to get thicker. 20 years from now, your bone's gonna be trying to get thicker. When you're 90, it'll still be doing it, just not very much. But again, the majority of the cells in that periosteal layer are glass, so they, they're making bone. And if you, let, if you let them go crazy, that bone will just keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, the reason it doesn't do that is because you have another layer lining the, cap, the marrow cavity. So right where this marker is, where my finger is, all the way up by the entire cavity, you've got a endosteum. It looks the same, it feels the same. If I took the marrow out of there, it would be a living layer of tissue. But if I looked in the microscope, the main cell in there are osteoclast. So what's happening in the, in the cavity every day of your life? Reconstruction. It's what? It's reconstructing. It's breaking down, it's destructing or reconstructing or tearing down. So at Charles age right now, and even my age, for every cell we build up, we break one down. So what is your bone actually doing? Staying exactly the same. I guarantee you I can take a bone density test on her today, and I can take one on her 20 years from now, and her bone density probably wouldn't change much. Unless she went on a crazy diet and a crazy exercise program and started shooting all kind of hair, hormones, her bone's gonna stay the same. And that's everybody in the room. It's, you know, once you're grown, once you're 19, 20, your bone density is not gonna change much throughout your life. When you get older, yes, especially females, we'll talk about that later. But because for every cell we build up in the periosteum, we tear down one down in the endosteum. And that's a good thing. I don't want my bone to get super thick because I'd weigh a ton. I don't want to fill up my marrow cavity. I wouldn't have to like, weigh too much. I also don't want it to get too thin where it, if I take a step, it breaks. So there's a fine line. You know, you guys are pretty healthy, so I think that you're probably right where you need to be. You always heard, right? Oh, I got thin bones. People in my family have thin bones. People in my family have thick. That's true. Genetically, you can have thicker or thinner, but there's a range in there with humans where it's healthy. Okay, so we know about endosteum periosteum, correct? All right, here we go. That's all that says. Now we got a bunch of new words. They're kind of sound crazy. Remember, there's no pictures on my test, so you have to be able to define all this stuff. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory what they say. Look at this word. Osteogenesis. Doesn't that sound like making new? Genesis, the new, right? So what is osteogenesis? Making new bone. Are you doing that right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, get not this way. But your, your bone's trying to get thicker. Who 
who's really doing that? My rocket, my three-year-old. Kids are going every day. Right? So when you're really young, this is going crazy. It slows down once you reach maturity, reach full growth, 18, 17, 16, 19, whatever it is. It's going to slow down your whole life, but you're going to you're going to be doing this your entire life. What kind of cells do that? Blast. So you make new bone. That's osteogenesis. What does that? An osteoblast. Now this name sounds bad. Look at this. Osteolysis. Ooh. Tear down bone. Right? What cells do that? Class. They even say dissolve. I don't want my bones to dissolve. But sometimes I do. So what is osteolysis to break out of bone? What kind of cells do that? Class do that. When do I want to do that? When I'm low on calcium. So if, I, if I'm in the desert or hunting in Montana and I don't eat any, drink any milk or eat any broccoli for two weeks and I have a lousy diet, all I'm doing is drinking coffee, eating candy bars or something then I need some calcium because your heart beats with calcium, your muscles contract with calcium, you have nerve impulses with calcium. Calcium makes dopamine going in your brain, makes you feel good. So you've got to have some calcium. If I don't have enough, where do I get it? From the bones. So sometime you need to do this. Another time you need to do it if you did this. Let's say I broke my leg and the doctor was lousy and he set the bone kind of off. He didn't set it exactly right, it's a little off. Well, six months down the road, you can never tell the difference because my bone would dissolve where I don't want it, and it would grow back where I do want it. And it does that on by itself. I don't know how, I'm just telling you, it just does. So again, to keep it simple, this is the breakdown of bone, this is the building up of bone, that's the cell that build, breaks, I mean, builds bone, that's the cell that breaks down bone. Breaks that stuff, we don't care because we don't have a picture yet. Don't care about that one. Now, this is where y'all lie, because last year, and the semester before, and the semester before, and the semester before, and the semester before, and even the semester before, when I didn't teach labs, I would say, have you seen this? And everybody in the whole class, no. They'd be the same, same slide in the lab. I looked at it, it was right on the table. Just because you didn't look at it doesn't mean it wasn't in there. So there was a slide that looked exactly like that in the lab. You were supposed to look at it. You were supposed to label all that stuff. There was a model in that lab that looked exactly like that. I think that question was on the midterm. It said, what is this? And the answer was central canal. And then it said, what is this whole thing? And the answer was osteon. You can see it in the microscope. You can see it in the model. All right, this lecture test next Monday, you got to find those things. There's no pictures. So here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, part of six up there. One, two, three, four, five central canals in these two pictures. These aren't the same bone. This is with the light microscope like we have in the lab. This was an electron microscope like we have at Harvard or UT Austin. Where in a, they take up the size of a room and they're huge. They're for looking at little bacteria and stuff. But you can put a bone in there. I actually think this one looks better. But that is a central canal. If you don't like that word, you can call it a Habersian canal. That's how I learned it. For the guy that, for the girl that discovered it. Habersian canal. It's both of them are right. And you, y'all are alive. What's in there? You're alive, you're sitting there. What's in there? Vessels. There's arterioles and venules in each one of those. So for people that tell me all bones, I made the mistake entirely because I I got caught. I'd already seen two open heart surgeries and I made it through both of them. I saw a liver, part of a liver transplant thing. I watched the thyroid removal. I watched the gallbladder removal. So I was like Mr. Surgery Man. I, I got anything down, I got it. And I saw on the list, hip replacement. Ooh, I want to see that. And it was a lady that was probably in her 60s. And I go, yeah, she's still young, it's gonna be cool. That was the bloodiest massacre of a thing I've ever seen in my life. I was standing on the corner going like this. And all the doctors were laughing at me. I was standing like this, and they go, hey, respiratory dude, you okay? No, no. <laughs> I couldn't, I was dying, I was sweating, I felt nauseated. 
blood was flying all over the room. The guy had goggles on and chunks of the lady's ball right into his eyes. And I'm like, you're killing me. And they were talking about what they were going to eat for lunch. Don't go watch bone surgeries if you don't want to see blood. Because when they cut through a bone and put in a prosthesis, a metal ball and socket like they did in that lady's head, they tear through all this and the blood is flowing everywhere. And you can't stop it because you can't put a tourniquet on something hard. So it is, it's way better. If they told me that there was a paramedic uh, and I was working in the ER and they told me there was a broken bone, a compound fracture, and that I had to go, I'd go hide. I don't want to see that because there's blood going there. I wouldn't hide, but I would just try to come help me. What are we getting at? Bones are highly, highly, highly vascular. Those ones you saw in the lab were dead. The blood was gone. But in real life bones like you have in your body right now, they are so packed with blood supply. What is that good? What is that good for? Why is that a good thing? Cartilage doesn't have any, ligaments don't have any. That's why they're in pain, right? When you tear them, you have to have surgery, they don't heal. You tear cartilage, it doesn't heal. You break a bone in half, you're good to go in a couple of weeks. Right? Not too bad. Broke his thumb and he's gonna play in another month. He's good to go. He's gonna swim it back. If he tore his ACL, he was out for the season, right? So the, the vascularity makes for good healing. They heal, they heal quick. Again, you tell me, here's my leg, right? You, I see the guy come up with a big sledgehammer, a little bitty scalpel. And they said, Robertson, we're gonna smash your femur in half with the sledgehammer, or I'm gonna cut your ACL with this little leg. Get to smashing, get to smashing. Don't you cut my ACL with that little razor blade, bro. My bone's gonna heal up. Six months from now, you're not even gonna put a cast, I'm gonna be good to go. Right? So the vascularity makes it heal really fast. All right, what are we getting at? You have thousands of these central canals in all your bones. Femurs, tibias, phalanges, whatever. I took care of that one. Waiting. Lacuna, Lacuna, that little house, just like the cartilage had to have, because this is a solid matrix. The, like in Highland cartilage, you have Lacuna because you need to have it go somewhere. And who's connected to you? Need Lacuna. In fact, you don't need Lacuna, but in something that's hard, you have to have a house. So you have Lacuna just like you do in cartilage. Well, if this bone was alive, what would be inside that Lacuna? Yeah, I hear it. Osteocytes, osteoblastic. Why are they not in that picture? Because that bone's dead. But that's where all the living, you don't like that picture? Look over here. Osteocyte and lacuna. Osteocyte and lacuna. Osteocyte and lacuna. On and on and on and on. Okay, so there, this is the only living part of this bone is right there. And then the blood vessel, I guess you can call blood alive. So the rest of it's all matrix. Here we go. Lamella, I don't care that you differentiate the two different kinds. There is concentric and there's interstitial. Here we go. There's an osteon, there's an osteon, there's an osteon. Here is concentric lamella. Getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. My bone's getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. Like a tree, like the rings in a tree, making it bigger and taller, right? Well, I got a problem because when you put circles, you can't fill it all in. That needs to be solid bone too. That's lamella as well. That's interstitial lamella. All the same stuff. It's hydroxyapatite, it's collagen, it's, it's matrix. It's, it's what makes the bone hard. Here's concentric lamella. Here's some interstitial lamella right there. I took a sample of that and did the exact same stuff. All right, you go with that one? Here's the, here's the. Mother though, here's the, what do you call it? The functional unit of all bone. That was on the test. That was on the midterm and had a bracket around it. You're supposed to label that in a model. Y'all put some crazy answers. I never, I was kind of entertained. Not that it was funny, but you wrote some, I don't know where you got the words from. You made up some words that I've never seen in my life. Like they, they kind of sound Latin. I was getting kind of impressed. My wife was reading the answers to me. We were in New Mexico and she was like, Kind of pronounce it, and I go, just give me the paper. You can't, you don't know what you're reading. And then you wrote it that way. <laughs> What's an osteon? It's a, osteon is 
one central canal with all its osteocytes that go with it. So in this picture, there's one, two, three, four, five, part of six osteons. How do you make your bone bigger? Put another osteon there. How do you get taller? Put another osteon there. All right, you good with that? It's the functional unit. What is a bone? It's thousands of these things that look exactly the same. So once you learn what one looks like, you know what a whole bone looks like. Ah, for your kid's name, here we go. I've already given you Highland, Apatio, Sura. What was the one in the, in the, in the mitochondria? Chris Day. Are you ready? This is your son's name. Say it like you're supposed to say it. Say it with that Latin flair. Didn't you do this in the lab? Don't be scared. How hey, do you say that word? I kind of butchered that. You ready? What's your last name? Oliveris? Oliveris. Can I lick your lie, Oliveris? Yes! No? That word is canalicula. You should have labeled that in the lab. You should have seen that in the lab, in the microscope. What do they look like? Crabs. They look like the spider webs in the bone. Are they spider webs? No. What are the canalicula? They're actually extensions of the osteocytes. So they're like the osteocytes saying, hey, I want to be able to go get something else, so I'm going to make a little microscopic extension of myself. And it, and it, it, it flows out from the osteocyte and moves to the next one and the next. Where's it trying to go? Okay, let's say this one right here. Is it, that osteocyte is there. It's going to have canaliculi trying to go where? To the grocery store. That's the grocery store. That's where the blood is. That's where the oxygen is. That's where the glucose is. This cell right here will die. There's no way oxygen can diffuse through solid bone. Glucose cannot diffuse through solid bone. It has to have nutrition and oxygen. So it gets into its canaliculi. So what are canaliculi? They're cytoplasmic extensions of the osteocytes. All right, what happens if I get too far? Here we go. Ready? Here's a picture right here. There's the central canal. There's my groceries right there, right? There's one. There's the second one. There's the third one. He's getting, or he or she's getting the best nutrition. Next best nutrition. Next best. What happens to that guy? So what do you have to do? You make another osteon. So now the cell, the bone just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you reach your genetic potential, which for me is six foot three. No more after I was six foot three, I didn't grow another centimeter. My thickness of my radius, all that is the way it is. Because I'm not making any more canaliculi, I mean, I'm not making any more osteons because my genetics said that's enough. If you're seven foot tall, you did, if you're Shaquille O'Neal, your genetics said keep going, right? Or if you're four foot, your genetics said stop. So if, when I get too far out of here, you just have to make another one. You can't, you can't have leftovers of leftovers of leftovers of leftovers, it's just no amount of nutrition left. So you build another osteon. That's why they're all about the same size. Notice this one looks about like that one. This one right here in the middle looks like the rest of them. And all these little kids right here are living off the what the main grocery store. You understand? That's where it kind of looks like. Not a crack. It's a cytoplasmic extension of the actual cell. Is that all the words? Yes, sir. So there's a surgery to get taller, right? Don't do that. <laughs> No, they, they can add, they're doing stupid things now, but how does it work? Adding chunks of bone in your bone, like break your bone in half and add it, I don't do that. Would it not, would it be a uh, Natural osteoclast not break that down? Yeah, probably because it doesn't know it, so I would never miss that. But for my son, and I wanted, let's say I, all I cared about was him pitching to that. <laughs> and I wanted him to be six foot five, because pitchers are usually tall, right? That's not true. Growth hormone. But again, he has it already, so am I, am I playing with fire doing that? More than likely. Because he, you're, all y'all's bloodstream already has that in it. So to put more, is he going to make you taller or bigger? Not necessarily. 
Now, if yeah, if he started going to the gym at four, pumping weights and doing those hormones, he would get picked. Yes. He's not interested in lifting weights <laughs> at four. But I've seen guys in sports teams get accused by doing cheating. Mother, is it cheating? Up? Don't get me started on this. So right now, can you still change your genetics? Like right now, you're you like no genetics. No. If I wanted to change your genetics right now, I would love to do it. If I would shoot every hormone in the world, it's not going to change anything. I'm already fully grown. Yes. What happens when I want to get shorter? <laughs> you could, I guess, chop a chunk of your bone out. But you know what? It's going to try to grow back. It's, your bones are weird because they're genetically set from your DNA and they try to heal themselves and they try to put themselves back like they were. So all these things to be taller and shorter really don't ever work. I'll say, leave yourself alone and be happy. If you're four foot tall, you're going to live longer. If you're seven foot tall, make a lot of money in the NBA. Who's that guy from the Rockets? It was so, he got all kind of joint problems. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah that guy. He can't walk now. Just wasn't, he wasn't made to be that. He probably he wasn't made to be that. Okay. okay. Does everybody see what an osteon is? An osteocyte, the kind of the eli, the mallet, and all those actions. Oh, it says right there. There we go. The basic unit of compact bone is an osteon. That's just how it's done. So every one of those little circles with the, with the central canal is the function unit of all bone. <coughs> I mentioned this word last time, but I'm not sure that I showed you a picture or I defined it. So let's, let's talk, talk about it. Trabiculae. There's the bone, right? It's ugly, but that's the bone. Compact bone on the sides. Compact bone on the sides. Marrow cavity in the middle, right? Up here, what do you have? Spongy bone. Those little spikes that are screwed are trabicular. So it's 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 a way to make the bone strong without making it solid. Let's see this picture. Trabicular. Notice they still have lacuna. They still have central canals. They still have lamella. It's just bone laid down a different way. And you can tell right now that this is going to be a lot lighter than if that was solid. It's not as strong, but I'll, I'll take it. To not weigh 400 pounds, and be so heavy, I'll have to build muscles from just to move. All this bone up here is going to be spongy, and the only where I need to contact is on the side where it's going to get hit to break. And you can see how much thicker that looks than up there. So trabiculae are the spike, I don't know how they're going to define it, but the spike-like projections of bone that make up spongy bone. What's the kind of marrow that's all between them? Red. So that's what your blood cells are there. Nice, nice. Look at all this blood. Quit the bone until you don't bleed. Crazy amounts of blood by the heart, veins, arteries, arterioles. All, there's an osteon, there's an osteon, there's an osteon. All running through there with the melody being laid down. The bone's a bloody thing when you tear it up, when you break it. And the worse the break is, the more it bleeds. Now, too many stomachs bleeding like crazy when you smash it in the face. I was crying. Oh! None of y'all showed up to the dump days. I was there just with my daughters. I had all my money. I was going to buy you wings and drinks and beers and tequila. And I was the only one there. It was me, my three daughters, and they don't like baseball. They want you to go because of me. And I was sitting there, and there was a 90 year old man with his wife. And every time they asked us to be good, I'd go, and the lady would go, hey, yes, sir. That's all we had. And they lost. <laughs> it's y'all's <your> fault. <laughs> I'm superstitious about that. And you didn't show up. Next time I invite you somewhere, you better come. Uh, my daughters were like, where's your students? <laughs> and they lost. <laughs> okay, here we go. Don't write this down. It's common sense. You ready? Look at this and tell me why you're going to know this already. The trabiculae are laid down in a way where the force is on the bone. So if I'm looking at a, what bone is that? That's a femur. Look, that's where the fourth, nobody walks around doing this. So all the trabiculae are laid down where the force is going to push. That's why your bone always breaks from the side. If you, if you smash the joint, if you break it here from force this way, that means you jumped off a five story building. So the normal way it's going to break is where the, there's no, there's no uh, trabiculae going that direction. So it's all laid down all over your body. 
to wherever that force is at that moment. Same way with the pubic machine, they're pushing up, pushing down, pushing out, the force is coming toward the joint. So the trabecula is always laid down that direction. So this compact bone cover the whole bone. I already did this, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of on the sides? What kind of cells? Oh, I still said. I still blast. Where is it located? Outside. What kind of cells? I still class. Where is it located? On the inside of the marrow cavity. Only in the living bone. We're not see that in the bone in the lab. It's a dead bone. All right, this is the pain. I'm going to try to make it easy for you. This part, you did it like med school. And they went overkill on this because it is important. It's how your skeleton is actually made. But it is super, super complicated. And there's controversy about what's blocked. I can't talk about that because it's what's blocked. So when I talk about an age of somebody right now, I'm not talking about from the time you hit the ground. If I say three months old, I'm talking about inside your mama. But there's some people that believe life doesn't start until you're outside the mama. So, I don't care how, I'm not going to say what I think or what anything like that. I don't want to get in any trouble. But when I talk about how old you are, we're talking about from the time the sperm hit the egg. Not from the time you popped out in the hospital or on the floor in your, wherever you were born. I was born in my living room, but they wanted to the, call it a midwife. My mom didn't go to the hospital. But this happens inside your mama when you're developed and not. So when I say three months, I mean three months from the time the sperm hit the egg. And again, I'm not positive in the times. I'm not an embryologist. I don't study embryology, so I'm guessing on some of these times, but I kind of know these skeletons for me. All right, these also, while this is weird, they're happening at the same time. So you can't say, oh, this happens first, then that happens. It's going on at the same time. Let's simplify this. Ossification happens when you take a, a tissue that's not bone and you turn it into bone. Does anybody know what kind of tissue you were at five months old inside your mama? Or four months old? Or three months old? Your whole skeleton was basically a piece of carpet. And again, it starts to change probably earlier than four months. But most of your skeleton came from a from hyaline cartilage. So I, again, I could go inside you when you were this big and take your hand and just go yank, 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 because you were cartilage. And then before you were born, it all ossified. It changed from hyaline cartilage into bone. You popped out and I, I held you. So you started kind of moving around, right? This also happens when you're inside a mama. This is making it hard. So this means changing another type of tissue to bone. This means putting the hydroxyapatite in there, putting the calcium salts to make it hard as a rock. And again, this was all happening when you were inside a mama. Where is the only place when you came out, you still had a lot of cartilage and other tissue? Don't you ever, don't you ever felt the baby's head and pushed up? No. <laughs> At the hospital, I always do that because it freaked me out. When they're first born, right, especially preemies, they got a big, like, there's a membrane there and you can kind of just, their skull's still open. And even when they're born on time, you still have those fontanelles, right? So, again, this is converting some other tissue, mainly highly cartilage. This is making that bone hard. All right, so there again, they're not one after the other, or one before, they're happening at the same time. Trabiculate. I didn't notice that. Okay. I got excited, sorry. All right, we're gonna talk about the first one first. This one will be one question on the test about it because I don't like it, and it's only a few of your bones, okay? This is intermembranous ossification, and this is coming from a membrane. This is coming from, you remember that? I hear you actually right there. That the slide that said mesenchyme, I'll do that in the first room. I didn't make you learn that, I didn't put it on the practical. But this is where this came from, and this is only here. So when you're talking about frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, all came from a membrane. That's why it says intermembranous ossification. 
That's why you be looking, I don't like to do it. I saw my son and it freaked me out because I kept going to see a son and every month because I was trying to find out if it was a boy or a girl. I didn't care about the rest of the stuff, but they showed me his head and I could see his brain through the membrane. I'm like, I, that's what I like in the office. And then she, they told me it's a boy because I already had all girls. So I was like, fine. Anyway, so this only happens in dermal bones, which are here. So your skull is formed here. It's formed from turning membranes into bone. The rest of all the 206 bones are done another way. So that one I'm one question about. That's that slide of messing kind. I don't know what that even looks like. That's horrible. So that would be the skull form. This is where you need to pay attention and put stuff down. All the rest of your bones, arms, legs, hips, sternum, ribs, everything else comes from interchondrial. There's the word, C-H-O-N-D-R-L, what's that mean? Cartilage. Cartilage. Cartilage model. You can put hyaline right there if you want. Hyaline cartilage model gradually replaced by bone. Increases bone length. This is all happening to the rest of all your bones. So the answer is hyaline cartilage for all the rest of them. Now, the pictures are going to drive you nuts because the question on the test is going to be put in the, which one's in the right order? Which one comes first, second, third, fourth, fifth? What's the third thing that happens? What's the second thing that happens? Which one's in the wrong order? Which one's in the right order? So you kind of have to look at this picture and not memorize all this. Just kind of think about it when you see the test question. And that makes it good. Remember, all these pictures, you ain't born. This all happens inside your mom. So again, I don't know the exact time because I'm not an embryology expert, but you're about that big when this all starts. And when you, you got a little hand and little legs and little feet and are that long, this is all happening. By the time you pop out of, of mom, you look like this. That's the way your bone looks. So we got a long way to go. So this, this is anywhere from, I don't think you have any cartilage starting in two months old. So from three months to nine months, this is all happening. What is that bone that looks like this one, right? I'm just going to say it's a metacarp. It's not an arm. It's not a leg. There's no head. There's nothing on there. But they'd all be doing the same thing. But we just stick to this as a metacarp. If I went into the amniotic sac of the female right now and grabbed this kid's hand, what could I do to his hand? Right? Because it's all cartilage. Would I do that to the poor little thing? No, but you could. He wouldn't care. She wouldn't care because all his bones are cut. You can bend his leg around her in a knot. It's just like that. It's all out of the Where's the first place anything weird happens? In the middle. Notice what that says? Calcifying matrix. So there's some hydroxyapatite, some cartilage, I mean some, some uh, calcium salts being laid down in the center. So now if I took this, let's say it's three months old. If I took the kid's metacarpal and I push it together, it feels gritty in the middle. So that's the first place I've got any kind of thing happening where I can tell you that's about to be a bone. I don't see any blood supply. I don't see any osteoclast. So really, this is the first one. Test question. Where is the first place actual bone is laid down in the human being? Where? Where do you see yellow? Where do you see yellow? Okay. On the side, on the, it's probably going to be worded though, on the peripheral edge, or on the sides, or on the edge, on, on the edge of the diaphysis. Now I go into Junior's hand, I go like this, and I feel his metacarpal, and he's got a hard shell on the outside. How old is he right now? I don't know. I'm guessing around three and a half months, four months old. What kind of cells are making that bone? Osteoblast. What kind of cells are tearing the cartilage out of the way to make room? Chondroclast. So now we got activity going crazy. What else is different about this picture and that one? It's big. Bone formation. It's hungry. This is when mama's going, hey, I need some, I need some. I remember uh, my five kids, I know what happened each time I was there. I need milk. I need ice cream. It's 12 midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning. I need a pickle. 
Man, I, yes, ma'am. I didn't say it like that. I didn't go, what the hell, it's midnight. I knew what the problem was. This kid is sucking all her calcium from her bloodstream. The, the kid's not breathing. Mama is, all the oxygen going to build a skeleton. So my wife was actually making another skeleton. That's a real pain. It, her, her skeleton is being deprived. This kid don't care. So when she said, man, I need a pizza at three in the month, get up, go, right? Guys, this is a lecture to you. Don't even, don't even question, just go, okay. And smile, you're gonna be tired as hell. She would ask me for crazy crap, like blue cheese or hogging dogs ice cream or, or milk. <clears throat> Everything's getting taken from mama. Oh, look how big that finger is just in those two pictures. The kid's growing like a mat. Okay. Well, oh, Lord, look how much bigger that one is than that one. This is going on down the line another two weeks in fact. Mama's really eating everything in sight now because it's expensive to grow bone. It's expensive. You're ready when you have kids. Test question. Where is the primary ossification center located? In the middle of the diaphysis or shaft. It's going to be worded in the So the second place you have bone laid down is the primary ossification center, and it's right smack dab in the middle. Notice nothing's happened at either end. So this kid's bone is still very fragile in the ends, movable, and now in the middle it's gotten pretty hard. If I grabbed it now, it would feel hard on the outside, kind of hard on the inside, there's still quite a bit of cartilage. So the kid's hand is only this big to get. Okay? Another two, three weeks past, it's got it now. It's finished. I, I smash on it now as hard as rock. How come the middle is open? How come there's nothing in the middle? What's that going to be when you're an adult? The marrow cavity. So we want to leave it open. We only want compact bone on the edges, and we want that open with the marrow to go in there. And now the blood supply's even gotten bigger. Mom's really eating it big now. Now the kid's moving around and she's doing it. Okay. Next question. Where is the secondary ossification center located? In the two epiphysis. In the proximal epiphysis and the discal epiphysis. So this is the third place bone is laid down. It would be in the ends. This kid is getting uh, now you can feel him on the outside, and you can see his feet kicking and moving because now his bone is hard. He's not worried about bending a piece of cartilage. The bone is almost ready to go. So this kid is five months old now. I mean, not five. Uh, it's nine months old, eight months old. Blood supply all over the place. Mama needs nutrition like crazy now. Both oxygen and calcium and vitamin D and vitamin C. And the kid's using all that up. Consciousness. Okay. Born. Ah, oh, I still see a big chunk of cartilage there. What's that cart? What is that? Is that gonna go away? Or is that gonna stay there? What's that gonna do? What's what's this epiphyseal cartilage gonna be? You're born, you're out. It's maybe whatever it is, unless your birthday. You're on the ground, I'm on the ground. You're there, the hospital. How long will that cartilage still be there? You know. 17 years until you're eh. with me it was like 17 I stopped growing tell her some girls it's 18 right once that bone when that becomes a line that's it I don't care what you do you need to get no taller and unless you do some like crazy stuff and take a chunk out and try I wouldn't do any of that but this is when you're growing taller when you still have an epiphyseal plate or you have epiphyseal cartilage and yes you can then put this out with drugs and make it no more, which I wouldn't do. How about that cartilage at the top? How long is that going to be there? It says articular cartilage. How long? Rest of your life? So you're 100. Even when you die, it's your skeleton and it'll still be there. Unless you do something stupid. You tear it or you do something weird and you tear that up. That piece of hyaline cartilage will be there until the day you die. It's going to grow bigger until you're full grown, and then it's going to stay just that same. Color. I've got the same piece I had there since I was five. Still working. What kind of cartilage are both those? 
Say the same answer. Island. Number one car fish in the world. Maybe you that for sure. This person is full grown, ready to go. Now, I, I embarrassed myself in clinical. I, this was in Tyler when I was doing my respiratory clinicals. And I was driving the doctors nuts. I wanted to see all these surgeries, and I was always, they'd see me coming and go hot, I could tell. He's like, he's some crazy respiratory guy, wants to know everything. And I was always hanging around the x ray people because at the hospital they got a person, you should do this job, it's really cool. They call it an elephant, and they push this x ray machine around, and it's mobile, and you can go into a patient's room and do an x ray. And all you have to do is go in there and take a picture and leave, go to the next room. They do that all day long. And I'd always follow those people around in the hospital. And I'd go, hey, man, can I watch you? Can I see what you're doing? And they'd always say yes because they want me to help them move the patient. They have to stick a big lead thing under them and they take a picture usually of the chest. Or it's a chest x ray to see if they got fluid or something. And lots of people get them in the hospital. And that person's always busy. And then I'd follow them back to the lab and look at the x rays. And one day I walked in there and I remember seeing one like this. I think it was a person's foot, though. And I saw the big gaps and I was like, oh, doc, what happened? Did they break their ankle? Why, why is there all that space between those bones? And he looked at me and goes, idiot, that's a kid. So what are, what are you seeing right there? This is totally normal, by the way. That's all the epiphyseal plates because that kid's hand is still, right? So what you're seeing is not a gap. What you're seeing are pieces of hyaline cartilage that means these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carpels are still growing bigger. And this big gap in their finger is not a gap. That's a piece of cartilage in their finger is going to So that's completely normal. That's a four-year-old or a five-year-old. Who's this? Not you. Notice there's some still little gaps because that cartilage is still there, except it's not turning into bones anymore. This person's full grown. Their fingers got a little gap right there. Thank God it wouldn't move, right? You can't move bone on bone. You have to have a piece of cartilage. So these are physio lines. These are physio plates. This is a kid under 16, under 17. This is an adult, 18 year old. What's this person doing? Growing fat. Thickness, so the bone is growing oppositionally. It's growing around. It's yours is still doing that today, right? My kids is really doing that, but y'all's is still doing it too. My team is still doing it. It's putting out a new osteon on the outer edge to get thicker. That's a good thing, right? So this is all oppositional growth, making the bone thicker and thickness for strong, for being strong. I want my as thick as they're gonna get when I get old, right? And I can still jump on something and not break my head. You can do that your whole life. They're showing you what you look like when you're born. This cartridge is always going to stay. This cartridge is going to stay until you're not even, when you don't even tell. Don't tell me blood's fat. You're going to see some blood, man. You, get, you go to a bone break accident where it's sticking out of the skin, or you go do a surgery where they put a new socket or a do a Shoulder replacement, you're going to see more blood than you've ever seen in your life. But as soon as you break that open, the blood's pouring out. And how do you put a tourniquet on a phone? So they just have to pack it with gauze and stuff. It, it bleeds like a miracle. Bones bleed like a miracle. Is that the advantage? You do If you break that half, it's going to be good to go into What kind of cartilage? Highland. Be there forever. Highland. Be there forever. What kind of what bone is that? The humerus. Humerus. All right, we're going to do a what the dynamic of the bone. So, in other words, what do you need to make it healthy? We can change the title to that right there. So, when it says dynamic nature, we're talking about what it needs to be the healthiest it can be. And we're going to make a little list up here and add some things. And this PowerPoint's about eight years old now, it's already outdated. The number one answer has moved. In the last five years, it's really gone crazy, and I'll tell you, and, it, and I've read studies that's proof. It's not a theory anymore, it's proof. And it's what I would do, especially if I was age. All right, let's look at this. First of all is, that's number one for ions. For the mineral you need, you have to have calcium. It doesn't show that here, but it shows the hormones that control it. So if you don't have calcium in your bloodstream, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. For 
the one thing your heart can't be, your muscles can't contract, your dopamine can't go across your brain, and your bones can't be hard. So the calcium is what makes your bones hard, like it makes the calcium salts, makes the hydroxyapatite. The more calcium that you have in your bloodstream, the easier it is to make your bones hard. And you don't have an excuse. You have a diet that's easy. I can go to Walmart and get a calcium supplement for three dollars and ninety nine cents. I would do that if I, if I didn't like milk, and I didn't eat yogurt, and I didn't like broccoli, and I didn't like spinach, and I didn't like anything dairy. I would just go take a calcium supplement. I wouldn't take it every day. I take it about every two days. Okay. I tell my daughters because they don't like to eat, they eat crap. And I go just go get you a bite for them, and I go, hey, did you take your pill? Ah, I didn't get all that. Take the thing. Because they're women, and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Ooh, this one right here, man. Yeah, for the hardness. And guess what's in the milk along with the calcium? And in South Texas, how, do you, how can we make that without even eating? Go naked in the sun? Don't they have a dude beach down here somewhere? No, that's a lie. You can just have your arms and your shorts. And the sun will make your vitamin D for you because we're in this hot girl time. But you can get that from milk as well. We take a supplement from Walmart. These are both for the hardness. That's for the collagen. So that's for the flex of the bone. Again, South 